Welcome to our Good News program. We're so thankful that you tuned in. We have are studying what is going to happen to those that do not know Christ. This has been the greatest burden for me, that children do not know how to be born again. We have neglected the Word of God. The Word of God is eternal. Jesus Christ is the living Word. And we must get back to the Word of God. The only hope of the world is the gospel of God's redeeming grace. And our theme word is John 3, 27. A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Only those things that are eternal are important. I hope all of you that learned those lessons on eternity, that you understand that Jesus Christ is from eternity to eternity. And in the book of John, it teaches us that he is the Son of God deity. And it's written to believers. The reason I'm giving some lessons from John, I want you to read the book of John through. See how many times you find believe or believeth or believed in the book of John. Only 21 chapters. You can read it in one day. 21 chapters. But if that's too much for you, read a chapter a day and write down how many times believe is in there. And then it teaches us that Christ, as the Son of God, came to seek and to save those that are lost. In this book of John, we are seeing the most wonderful things that we need in our lives every day. We need this word. If we would get up in the morning and not eat any food for how many days do I go without studying the book? If I got up every morning and did not eat anything for my body, what would that mean? It's the same way we can have victory apart from this book. We just read that last time, and we're going to read it again. So we see love is in this book 57 times, the book of John. God is love. And we are to love the way he loves. And in 1 John, John wrote the book of John, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, and the book of Revelation. And he says, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, you believe, and you will receive the gift of eternal life. Everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. That's every child of God. We are one in Christ, and he's the head. Verse 2, by this we know that we love the children of God. Why am I here for you? Because God loves you, and I love you. I just am a teacher of God's word, and I do this for the glory of God. I'm like Christ, well, he died for the whole world. I want every person in the world to receive this gift. I know what it's like. I live the abundant life. This is what I want for you. I want every one of us to be raptured, to be with the Lord. Nothing more in this life, because that's the next thing that's going to happen. And only those things that are eternal are important. So here, but we are to love the children of God. When we love God, we keep his commandments. That is the greatest joy in the world to give out his word. Absolutely the greatest joy in the world. And then he says in verse 3, because this is for you. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his, his commandments are not grievous. You know, he says, in the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. And I have given this out so many times, I want everybody to know that this is my prayer verse. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. 
and everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now that's only for believers because God's not going to give us nothing or allow something to happen to us unless it is for our good. Remember Job in the Bible? He was, he had everything taken from him, his children, all of the wealth that he had. And then Satan wanted to do something. He said he would, Satan didn't believe that Job would obey God instead of him. But what happened? God even allowed his body to be covered from the top of his head to the top of his toes with boils. What did he do? He worshiped God and his wife. Your family can be an enemy if they don't love God. His wife said, curse God and die. He said, how can I receive the good things from him and not the bad. You see, you're going to have a body that never hurts. When we reach the speed of light, 186,241 miles per second, we reach eternity. We will never, uh, this flesh and blood can't go to heaven except a man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God because the spirit has to lift you up. That's the power that takes us into heaven. At our time, when we are ready to meet our Lord, our body goes back to dust. Our spirit and soul go to be with the Lord. We never die because our spirit can't die and our soul can't die. Only this body that is nothing but dust. Why would you be proud? This is the most amazing thing to me. Why would anyone be proud when we're slave to sin and obey sin rather than obeying God? This has been the greatest mystery for my ministry. And I've been serving the Lord for 40 years, and that's a long time. But I love every minute of it. And then he says, for whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. We, it, see, here's what he says. Look at this. Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the, lust of the fl fulfill the lust of the flesh. Galatians 5, 16. Walk in this Word. You see, as a child of God, if we teach it, we're to live it. That's what he says. So here, who is he that overcomes the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Christ? He is the Son of God. He came to save you, and He loves you with an everlasting love. I want you to understand that. His love never changes. No matter how many times we sin against Him, He never quits loving us. He's always wanting to draw us to His dear Son, Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, these words, I pray, thy word teaches that they are like a fire. And when the word is given out, their, your heart will burn within thee and receive this gift of eternal life. We are washed from our sins in his own blood. And the place that he has for us is mansions. I have not seen nor ear heard the glories he has for us. I pray today that every person will get on their knees and pray this prayer that I just gave last time in these lessons, that every person will accept this gift of eternal life. This is life eternal, that we may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Thank thee today for saving 100 fold. In Christ's name we pray, amen. So we see that the first use of a word, now listen to this, this is very important. The first use of a word, a phrase, or an incident in the Bible 
gives the key to the exact meaning everywhere else in the Word of God. This is how important. And the overflow of our Bible study is what blesses the life of others. That's why we're to study. And then in Colossians 1, since we were reading Colossians, given that Bible verse says that we need to appropriate by faith every day until we're raptured to be with the Lord. But he says in Colossians, listen at this. This is so amazing. When we study these books, we get so excited because we appropriate them by faith and they're living through us because he's the living word. He says in Colossians 1, chapter 4, Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love which you have to all the saints, for, verse 5, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven. This is what, our, this is what every minute of every day, I'm to be holy as he's holy. If we're looking for that blessed hope, we're to purify ourselves even as he is pure. And he says, where have you heard before in the word? You have to read the word. There is no other way to please God except in this truth. Before in the, in the word you heard, before you heard the word of the truth of the gospel, which is come unto you as it is to all the world. That's what we're doing now. This is going to all the world to preach the gospel to every creature. That's what he desires. So here he says, and bringeth forth fruit 100 fold. I've always prayed for 100 fold. As it doth also in you since the day you heard of it and knew the grace of God in truth. This is his grace is sufficient for every need. So Ephesians 1, 4, listen to this. This is the most amazing thing. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, he loved us before the world began, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. And then Revelation 17, 8, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. He already knew who was going to be saved. That's how he could write our names down. And those that don't, their names are not written there. They are going to an eternal place that is called hell, where there's no light the blackness of darkness forever and pain and sorrow. But listen what he has for us in Psalm 16. I pray that you will study this and learn it and memorize it. And this is why he has this in us. Listen what he has for us in Psalm 16, verse 11. Thou will show thee the path of life. In thy presence, in his presence, is fullness of joy. He's in us. His abiding presence is with us. That's fullness of joy. And then, at thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. You see, he created us for his pleasure. How much pleasure do we give to him today? So now we're going to find out what is the rapture. This is why everybody must know that this is the next thing that's going to happen. So I've got questions and I'm going to answer them. And if you have other questions, all you have to do is to let me know. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's what he has. So we're going to meet him in the clouds. But see, it's not his will that any should perish. So if you hear these and you don't know him, you get on your knees right now and just say, Lord, I believe that you died instead of me and your blood cleanses me from all sin. Because Revelation 1, 5 says, he hath washed me in, my, in his blood. He has washed my sins in his own blood and he never remembers them again after we confess that. All the past sins, forgetting those things which are behind.
So what is the rapture? Well, the rapture is the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. The rapture is the final fulfillment of the resurrection and ascension of our Lord. You see, when he went back to heaven, he was on the earth for 40 days after he arose from the dead. Then, 10 days later, he sent the Holy Spirit to dwell in the lives of believers. He was taken up just like that, and his disciples were there. And then when his disciples saw that, they, he said to them before that this is what is going to happen to you, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Spirit is coming upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Samaria and into all the world, in Judea and Samaria and into the whole world. So what happened? They said, the two angels that stood there, and they saw him taken up. They said, ye men of Galilee, why stand you gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you've seen him go into heaven. That was his resurrection, and that was his ascension. I have been crucified with Christ, and now I'm ready to meet him in the clouds because only my spirit, absent from the body and present with the Lord. So here he is the head and we are the body. We must be united. John 17, 24. This is his desire for us today. I want you to write this down on a piece of paper and read it every day. His high priestly prayer was John 17. Praying for us before he went to the cross. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou hast loved me before the foundation of the world. He loved Christ. Christ loves us. And now he loved us before the foundation of the world, knowing he wrote our names down in the Lamb's book of life. And then this is the Lord's clear expressed will that his own which he has bought with his precious blood. And he said it was a joy for him to suffer for us. Is it a joy for you? It must be in everything give thanks. With his precious blood, be with him in his presence so that we finally may behold his glory. This is what the rapture is all about. And then 1 John 3, 2. Now you must write these scriptures down and you cannot doubt. If you doubt, you won't receive any good thing. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, but it does. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope purifieth himself, even as he is pure. First John 3, 3. What is the rapture? The rapture is the transformation into the image of him who was transformed before us. When he was on the earth, his body was transformed with Elijah and Moses there. Elijah had gone to heaven without dying. If he should come today, we would be raptured up. We'll take our last breath and we would be taken up. And then those that have died, like Moses, God buried Moses, they come out of the grave first and then we are going to be changed just like that in the, in the air. When is the rapture necessary? Why is it necessary? Because we have to be changed into the image of him who was transformed before us when he was on the earth. His body was as bright as the noon day sun. That is a body that never hurts. So why do we have to have the rapture? Well, he has to permit the world to reach the climax of evil. When the cup of iniquity is full, God's word says in 2 
Timothy 3.13. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Today the world is living in deception. They don't know who to trust. Everybody has fear. But as a child of God, he said, I'm not giving you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Why is the rapture necessary? To allow the Antichrist to be revealed. Now remember, the Antichrist, after we're raptured, he is going to be, everybody's going to be a slave because he's going to dictate you what he wants you to do. You can't even buy or sell unless you obey him. And if you worship him, and that number 666 is put in your head, and in your forehead and in your hand, then you will live eternity in a place called hell where Satan and his prophet and the beast are going to be there forever and ever and ever. That is a final abode of Satan and every person that don't receive this gift of eternal life. And it could be today, we're going to find that out. So we see the mystery of iniquity can never fully develop its work of darkness. It's going to be the worst time on this earth. Nobody's ever seen it before. As long as there is one spark of light present on the earth, he can't he can't show himself until we are raptured. You see, we're to be restraining the evil forces. That's the light. His light puts out all darkness. His light with us in us. His Shekinah glory dispels all darkness around us. So the mystery of iniquity will cease to be a mystery until the lawless one, the Antichrist, is manifested. That's our enemy. And 2 Thessalonians 2.18, Then that shall that wicked one be revealed, the restraining power of the Holy Spirit. Everybody getting on their knees today. And we can restrain all of the evil forces around us. Our little children will be safe. We are restraining. And if we're not, then he's going to come. And all of those that don't know Christ is the ones I'm concerned about. So here we see God will utterly destroy the Satan and his kingdom of darkness and then establish his kingdom of peace and righteousness. Oh, I want you to be living in these places where he's prepared for us. John, just think of John chapter 14. Everybody should read this every day. If you don't know it right now, turn to chapter 14 of John. He says, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there ye may be also. You see, he says, I am the way. He's the only true God. He's the only person to be worshipped. Only deity is to be worshipped. He's the only one that can perform miracles. And he had to go by his own blood. He entered into the holy place. And he's there today preparing a place for us. This is what the word is all about. This is the rapture. And it, we're going to find out who will be raptured. For those, only one way. That's through the Spirit of God and the blood of Jesus Christ. Only born-again believers, only those that are in Christ. The Lord himself is going to descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. Only those that have the Spirit of God in their bodies. It takes the Spirit and the soul and the angels carry us into heaven. At your, you never die. And you take your last breath, your spirit and soul go to be with the Lord. It is the blood that makes an atonement for our soul. This is why you who will be raptured, only born again believers. You see why this is the last, last days. 
And that could happen at any moment. And I have to get these Bible verses in this time, but I will go into more detail next time. Who, who, when will the rapture take place? When? Luke 12, 40. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour which you think not. Matthew 24, 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels in heaven, but my Father only. Even his deity, this is his, his Father. He is, he is a Son of God. Matthew 24, 42. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. You have to be ready every day. I would be afraid to go to bed at night if I didn't know Christ as Savior. That's how serious it is not to know Christ. Matthew 24, 44. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. And then his believers will be crowned in glory. The Messiah will crown his faithful ones of Israel, his chosen people, at the Mount of Olives in Zechariah 14.4, Zechariah 14.7. This is, we're going to be lifted up into heaven, but the horizontal rapture is for the Jews and those he says for... Matthew 24, 31, And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall be gathered his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. This is what we're waiting for. We're going to be crowned in glory. What else could anyone want? So how shall we prepare? This is the only way is to know Christ. First of all, we're going to be, the believers are looking for the rapture. Then we're going to stand around the judgment seat for the things done in our bodies, whether they be good or whether they be bad. Behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me. Only for believers is this going to happen. The be people that don't accept Christ are going to go to the great white throne. That's when they're going to be cast into the lake of fire. And then we're going to have the marriage of the Lamb. He's the bridegroom and we're the bride. We must be united. And then he's going to, we're going to come back with him to this earth and reign with him a thousand years in peace and righteousness.